securely fastened whenever the seatbelt sign is on. Today we're going to talk about some of the reasons that you might want to open a dark kitchen. Maybe you don't have the funds right now to open a brick and mortar. Maybe you have concerns about opening a big shop right now. Maybe you want to expand, but there's no available units in that area in order to do so right now. So we're going to go over loads of things in this interview. I'm here with Isaac, the owner of Bougie Boba and loads of other companies come to find out. And we're going to be interviewing him to find out more information about his dark kitchen and his company, Bougie Boba. So if you do hear any noise in the background, you know it is a working kitchen and there are fridges and freezers. So just bear that in mind if you do hear any noise. So Isaac, um, can you please share with us exactly what a dark kitchen is? Of course, Kirsten. Uh, dark kitchen is essentially a kitchen without the shop front. So what that means is you can build brands, create brands or even expand brands into new locations by starting off small. You save from the front of house cost. You can start with, the, with how cheaper it is, more cost effective it is to start from a dark kitchen. So this, this unit here is quite a massive unit. It's got seven kitchens. Within each kitchen, each tenant runs multiple brands. Some of these kitchens have, uh, or brands have been fortunate enough to blow up within the catering scene and they've moved on to restaurants, shop fronts, and it's a, it's a nice, affordable way to get your dream off the ground. So basically, a dark kitchen is something that is not necessarily open to the public. It's an actual kitchen, an actual unit that someone rents, and it's mostly delivery. You, you can absolutely have people walking up, depending on the unit. Okay. So, so, some units, they have no customer facing, especially with COVID, a lot of customer facing or customer collections was halted for that period. So that's where we saw the boom of the dark kitchens as well. Where the shops had to close, people still needed to be fed, people still needed to drink. Companies like Deliveroo, Just Eat, Uber Eats, wherever you are, they saw the rise of their customer. Customers couldn't go to the, the shops anymore, so they needed it delivered. 90% of our business is probably delivery. But a good 10% is walking. Some areas can be a little bit saturated now. Yeah, because of the rise, the hype or bubble tea. Going all in with the shop front can be quite difficult. Yeah, so you've got to build up your brand. You can go with the shop front. If you haven't got a, a lot a lot of bubble tea shops in your area, then yes, by all means, you can start with the shop front, have queue, people queuing around the block. I don't know, the way I did it is I built up my brands. And then as soon as I knew they were ready for a shop front, we then move forward. That's a really great idea. So he brought up a really good point, which is if you want to start your business and you eventually want to get to a shop front, which is obviously higher costs than having a dark kitchen, yeah. you can use the delivery platforms as a way to promote your product, get people to enjoy them, get addicted to them, really want more. And then eventually when you save up enough, then you can open your shop front. Absolutely. And at that point you can start pushing out via your, um, your orders, your social media, we're opening a shop, come, come to our shop instead of just yeah. delivery. Uh, so that's a really great uh, marketing tool and advertising built into it at a really low cost. It's very important once you built up like a, a following, when you tell them you're opening a store, you get people flocking. Bougie Boba started here in this space, yeah? Mm -hmm. But we've been fortunate in the last eight months, we've grown to have two franchises opening. Listen to the feedback. So can you open something in this area? And we said, yep, yeah, we'll find a way. And that's how we expanded. It's about building the brand. And you can do this from dark kitchens, uh, minimal cost. So all you've got to think about is your sealer, your fructose machine, possibly a blender, depending on what beverages you do, and then refrigeration, then your stock. That itself is not a lot of money. This is a bricks and mortar, but not a bricks and mortar where people walk in. One person can manage this station. All right, if it gets really hectic, which it does sometimes, you need you need a secondary person. But you can manage that. Shop front, automatically need two people. You need one person just to take orders, and then you've got the second person making the drinks. Now, if you've got a busy period, one person can handle that if it's like steady, steady business. But if it's a time like a lunch period or just after work or, or the school a rush, then you're gonna get 20, 30 customers working trying to take orders while making drinks, one person can't handle that, yeah? And again, one thing I've done 
as a small business owner, we've done everything by myself initially, built up the trade and then gone to employ staff. And it's very important for you to know what you're doing, especially when you're training other people. I've, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough, I've, I've learned a lot from you. So yeah, any, <laughs> any, honestly, you're always gonna learn something new every day. Everywhere you go, they're gonna find something. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so in my mind, when I first heard the term dark kitchen, yeah. I thought a dark, dodgy alleyway, someone making bubble tea, behind the bins yeah. it's a dark kitchen don't talk about <laughs> it like so but where does this kind of name come about someone coined that term during lockdown most of the time the kitchens have always been in the dark right. but this is more simplified version if you flipped it instead of the bubble tea side if you're looking to do something like burgers hot dogs a dark kitchen is definitely a place to start to build a brand from scratch takes time any business you have to put in six months to a year and make sure you've got that working capital, yeah? Because, yeah, you're gonna have ups and downs and times that you wanna give it all up, but you just gotta plow through it, honestly. Yeah, you just gotta plow through it, you keep focused and yeah, make it happen. Okay, Isaac, if you were going to put together a dark kitchen bubble tea area like you have here, without telling us how much you spent, okay? But if you were gonna do it again today, roughly how much would someone be investing to do a bubble tea dark kitchen? Well, that's a good question. Um, really depends where you are, first of all. But you've got to think about the rent, gas and electric bills, if you have it, utilities. Somewhere in London, could be about a thousand pound a month for rent, uh, your utilities, the stock itself. I reckon you could spend about a thousand pound on stock. Again, it depends on, we've got quite a wide range here, yeah? yeah. But again, if you had like, eight to 12 uh, different flavors. Stuff like this has gone down in price, yeah? Because they're mass produced now. I, I remember when I looked at an automatic one, and I think they were like 1,500 pound. Now you can get one for five, 600 pound. So again, a lot of that's gone down, fructose machine. When I initially started, it was about 800 pound. Now you can pick one up for less than 200 pound. Probably start with, honestly, I reckon you can start with 5,000 pounds. That's exciting. I'm sure a lot of people at home will be excited to hear that. Yeah. So it seems like, the, the, like some of the benefits that you mentioned for a, a dark kitchen, it, low startup costs, yeah. uh, building that brand awareness, yeah. getting that loyal following, making sure obviously that you're doing um, everything 100% by the book, of course, especially when it comes to health and safety. And that's something I wanted to bring up. Now, a dark kitchen still has to follow all of the same health and safety guidelines, Absolutely. the same regulations as if you had a brick and mortar. And if anything, it might be even more difficult to make sure that you get that five-star rating. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to register with the local council, make sure, tell them when you're going to start operating, uh, make sure you're keeping your fridge freezer temperatures, you make sure you're labeling everything uh, so that your best before dates when you open something. Some of the syrups have got like six months on it once you open it. Some of the uh, popping boba, 30 days. So you need to know, but to be honest, you'll probably plow through them, sell them quite quick. Saying that, there might be unpopular ones that take a while to sell. With the food hygiene side of things, it's more about the management of it. The EHO, they need to feel confident in your management of food. It depends what you use. If you use fresh milk, you've got to think about that. Also allergens, allergens is very important right now. You can avoid some of the allergens. It depends if you bring the alternative milks into your uh, bubble tea shop, you're bringing in nuts, you're bringing in soya, these are all allergens that people react to. So you've got to make sure there's no cross-contamination. Basically, educate yourself and make sure you're on top of your game. If you are offering almond milk as a milk alternative, someone who has an almond allergy would be would get sick if they drank that product. Absolutely. If the staff member mixed the two, I mean, and the fact that they're in the same location, everything has to be labeled and oh my goodness, that's a lot. Okay, so what would you say uh, might be some of the pros and cons to a mostly delivery only dark kitchen as opposed to a brick and mortar actual shop uh, cafe location. Some of the pros and cons. One of the cons is, again, uh, it depends where you're located. Yeah, you can have a lot of dark kitchens on the high street. That way you've got people, you can get passers by, uh, sort of uh, footfall walking past, a sign uh, in the window saying bubble tea here. Then you've got people walking in. Uh, the issue we've had where we're located, we're just off the high street. So it's difficult to find us. Yeah, because we're located within, within another location. That's one of the cons rather. Saying that, if you've built your reputation up, people will come and find you. Word of mouth is the best. 
Yeah, so as soon as people have tried your drinks and they say, oh, you got to go try a bougie boba. They've got the amazing flavors or they've got this or they've got that. People will come and look for you. That was a really interesting point you brought up. So just to clarify with what you were mentioning, sometimes the dark kitchens can be located in a very busy area where you said there's a lot of footfall and traffic. People see, oh, this is a uh, bougie boba. It's a dark kitchen, but I can still enter. And you're going to get a lot of footfall traffic. People will find you easily. But the rent for a place like that would probably be much more expensive than an area like this one where it's it's tucked away, nobody can really find it, but it's going to be a little less to, uh, less expensive to run it on the dark kitchen side of things. So there's kind of, like you said, even with that, the pros and cons yeah. um, for that as well. So that's really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing, like I run multiple brands. So when I say multiple brands, multiple beverage brands, I'm fortunate enough, Bougie Boba is one of the ones was my baby uh, and that's the one that's taken off uh, saying that I've got burger brands and there was a burger brand that yep I've put my heart and soul into one of my other virtual brands has actually done a lot better so I now know from those brands which one to develop into shop fronts don't put all your eggs in one basket develop a couple and then go from there that's if you're doing it from a dark kitchen that was a mind-blowing example right there so for example, like if you've got a few different bubble tea brands that you want to experiment yeah. with, let's say you've got like a, you want to specialize more in milkshakes on one of them or fruity vegan teas on one of them, or you want to be an all inclusive one that kind of has everything. You can run in theory, I'm just making sure I'm understanding this. You can run all three from the same dark kitchen, doing it that way on the delivery platforms and then just kind of see which one becomes successful. Absolutely. And then whichever one becomes successful, then that's the one that you can turn into a brick and mortar cafe la shop location. Yeah. So let me give an example of how, how to tackle or how to beat the algorithms uh, when it comes to delivery, just the Uber Eats. Okay. It's like trying to rank. If you ever got a website, if you ever do a website, you're gonna get these phone calls, you're gonna get these text messages, you're gonna get all these emails. Can we help you with your SEO? SEO is about trying to rank number one or on the first page of Google uh, search list. It's the same theory when it comes to trying to rank in the first, say, 20 listings in Deliveroo, Uber Eats and Just Eat. First of all, if you're brand new, you've got absolutely no ratings. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you've got no ratings, you're the first, first month they might push you as a promotional or oh, new in the area, new on Just Eat, new on Deliveroo. But then it's a matter of getting those sales, making sure the customers leave reviews and staying in the fir first 20. Because if you open up at your Deliveroo or Uber Eats app now to order, I guarantee you, you probably go about, depends on where you are, in London, you probably go about 200 options. So not, someone won't sit in front of that and look through more than 20, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So this is the benefit of doing multiple brands. One day Bougie Boba might be in the first 20, I've got another one, Bubble Tea and Beyond. That might be in the first 20. Mock Stars, which is my vegan, completely vegan brand. So it's alternative milk teas. One week, this one might be popular. One week, that one might be popular. By putting three or four brands in, mm. that pool of restaurants available or uh, bubble tea places available locally, I'm bettering my odds. Because if everyone's got one brand each and I've got three brands from one kitchen. One area. Yeah, yeah. in one area, I, you know, I. I've beaten the odds a little bit. And then, as I said, you gotta get, make sure you're doing everything right. That's one of the other issues of being a delivery only platform. It'd be nice to be uh, customer facing as well. So customer facing, get to know people. Like me, when the tickets line up here, by the name I know and the order, I know, oh, you know what, that one's a regular customer. Even the software tells me, oh, this customer's ordered five times from you previously, 10 times, whatever. Just by looking at someone's name, you know, that's one of our regulars. But put, it'd be nice to put a name to a face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and it's more of a personal service. So another con I suppose I've just revealed from talking about that is you don't really get to know your customer working within a dark kitchen. The rapport you get between a ticket and yourself is not a lot. One thing that you brought up is that when you have a dark kitchen, you can't have that interaction with customers and building that rapport and that customer, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, and they come in every day because they want to see you and hang out and be part of the community. There is none of that. So actually for your dark kitchen to be as successful as it is with your brand, that means the quality of the drinks is ace. I mean, it is really, really good. That means like people are getting their drinks every single time, they taste amazing, and they're so good that they wanna keep ordering from you 
as opposed to going to a bubble tea shop down the street and walking in and having that experience. So they're actually, you're, you're delivering that experience to their home, if you will, and you're building that, that brand um, and, and integrity and um, the quality of drinks every single time. That's what's selling. The main pro is the fact that you keep the cost low. You can keep your staff costs low. You can keep your uh, overheads low. One of the other pros of running a dark kitchen is people that want to try different cuisines. So right now, if I'm honest with you, the bu bubble tea was my side hustle. My main was burgers I've been doing for years, but I saw the hype uh, with the bubble tea. My sister, she you know, introduced me to bubble tea and I thought, you know what? Wow, this is something different. And to be honest, it's doing really well. People buy people. In a dark kitchen, you can't do it. Shop front, you can build that rapport. I guarantee you nine out of 10 people, your personal behavior, your rapport building, your interaction with people, you can keep a customer, yeah? Even if your drinks are mediocre, yeah? Because people buy people. Yeah. They go, oh, you know what? I want to go in there because I can have a nice chat, yeah? Because sometimes they're not going in there for the drink. Yeah, exactly. They're just going for, for the chat. When we venture out into shop fronts, we'll, we'll look forward to that experience. Yeah. Okay, wow, that'll be like a whole new can of worms for you. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to hearing how that goes. I'm sure we'll probably do a, a follow-up one when you actually open your uh, brick and mortar because I didn't know that he had one in the works and you're going to be opening it really soon, right? Yes, uh, 27th of uh, June. You'll be seeing this interview after the fact that he's opened his shop already. So yeah. it's almost like a time warp situation yeah, here, but absolutely. we will have to do a follow-up video with you in the future to find out how it's going. Yeah. Um, that will be another fun video. I'm sure absolutely. you'll have a, a lot of new, very valuable information to share with us. Absolutely. So that's great. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we can then show you from what we did from a dark kitchen to how things have changed in a shop front and how much more stressful it is. Yeah. Well, would you mind, real quick, maybe as some bonus footage, showing us your future shop yeah, that's yeah. going to be opening next week? Yeah. That would be so cool if we could see that and see where you're at. So what we're doing is getting, excuse the pun, getting Boba Trouble out of trouble and rebranding it, yeah, to Bougie Boba. Wow, Isaac, you really lucked out with this place. I mean, it is just turnkey, ready to go. All you need to do is just change the branding and you Absolutely. are set. This literally all we're going to do, come in here, change the signs, uh, and open. Hopefully on a follow-up video, we'll know where we are and how this goes. Again, thank you for your time. This valuable information, it might be a really good opportunity and option for you, especially where you're at with your life and your business. This might be step one uh, in order to get to step two of actually owning the full-fledged brick and mortar of the shop. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Good, good.